Hello, it is Thursday and there is a cupboard open. Let me close that, it's distracting. Hello, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha if we haven't met and if we have met, welcome back. How are you? What's going on? We're having a sunny day here in Michigan, which isn't that common in January. Pretty excited about it, can you tell? It's Thursday, um, January 21st, I think. I don't know, you guys, I'm so lost. Does that sound right? It's probably right. I'm about to weave. Hello, my loom set up. I'm gonna warp just a short piece of yardage. I think I wanna make a bag. And it'll be my first one, I think, of hand-woven fabric. Um, the last project update video, I showed you guys some spinning. It was this. It was like navy, some dark deep reds, and some kind of like butternut squash color. It was called Wine Country. It was from my own shop. I just could not help it. I had to spin it. And somebody on that video suggested that I weave it with a navy warp. So this is Malabrigo Sock in Wales Road. And I'm gonna use this for the warp. I've calculated it out on Weevolution. We'll see how it goes. So honestly, I'm feeling like I can sew with my own hand spun now since the pillows without any concerns. So it's just a matter of doing it. Let's get it done. I'm about to use the warping bar and I'll show the specs. I put them in my little weaving notebook because I'm an adult now. So let's get this fella warped up so I can weave. Warped up, well, I mean, completely strung. I don't know, what do you call this part? So I'm gonna close the board up and I'm just trying to decide, yeah, I am gonna, okay, so sometimes when, especially when you're starting out, but sometimes this happens to me still, the beginning of my warp, I started here, is like saggier than the end, okay? So I'm gonna close up the bar. Let me get it so you can see. I'm gonna close up the bar and I'm gonna fix it. Because, okay, so those are pretty tight, but they're not super tight. You can actually reach back on these loops. Hang on, let me move again. You can actually reach back on these loops around the pegs and pull them out to tighten anything that's sagging. So I'm basically gonna adjust it. So there's, so it's even all the way across first. It's not too bad really, but And recently somebody sent me a note um, that was using all different thicknesses of yarn. You guys have actually, I've done that before. And I didn't have any trouble with anything moving in my loom. But the truth is, if you did have some trouble or you were worried about it, you do not have to take these pegs out while you roll it. You can just roll them 
in because when you use a warp separator, and I've definitely mentioned that you have to use a warp separator with this because it also will cover this nut. And if the nut is popping through, you're using too weak of a warp separator. That's why I use the Mylar, but you don't have to use the Mylar. You could use like a wrapping paper tube and just go over it. But if you're worried that your warp is gonna pull, that your warp is uneven and it might pull through or anything really, or you feel like you can't get the wing nuts tight enough, maybe you don't have a grip strength, you can leave these in while you wind it and then they'll hold tension on all the strings all the way across. So it's up to you, I don't need to, so I usually take them out, but I'm just gonna leave them in this time just to show you that you can do it. So, I'm gonna lay this on here. This is my warp separator. Okay, so I'm wound completely up. You can see that the warp separator keeps it like really smooth all the way around. It just goes straight and smooths out the pegs. It smooths out over that bolt. So everything stays nice and smooth if you use a nice rigid warp separator. You do need it. Gosh, it's been a while since I used such a plain warp, isn't it? But the yarn's gonna give it a lot of color. So. All you have to do now, you just wind it from this bar onto the back beam. So easy. Okay, so I'm locked up. My loops are out. I still have my dowels in. You totally can do this, you guys. I, I'm telling you, this whole thing just makes it so quick and easy. And then you just pull these out. All you gotta do is take the wing nuts off. You really don't have to take them all the way off either. You just need to loosen them enough to be able to like lift them apart a tiny bit. I just like to leave them on because then I store it with them on easily. And then you can just separate it and pull them right off. And you're basically, you're pretty much done. I gotta cut these loops and slay and then I'll lash on. So I'm gonna just take these now and tie them into one inch bundles for the lashing. Okay, so I'm all knotted and I'm gonna go get some linen yarn slash cord to tie up. I think you need to do this with something that doesn't stretch when you lash on this way. And a lot of people are like, well, cotton doesn't stretch much. It still stretches. So I have had trouble when I use cotton, but I've never had any trouble when I use the linen. So I am gonna go grab my big cone of that and cut up myself a big piece. Okay, so I tie it in a big loop. I'll tie the two ends together. In, I think it's called an overhand knot, but I tie the two ends together and I start with the knotted end because that way if I did not cut enough, because I don't, I mean, I've heard different formulas, but to me that doesn't really make sense because the thing is, it makes a lot of difference how far away your knot is going to be from your apron bar. So it's magnified, like even if it's a half inch further away, it's a half inch further away, 
both ways on all these bundles, that adds up to a lot. So I purposely make this so at the end there will be a loop and I can connect a new one through it like this if I need to. Hopes and prayers, right? That's what my weaving's actually made of. I like to start on the right. I don't know why, there's no rhyme or reason to that. And I just take the knotted end and split it apart and run the loop end through it to connect it. And you just take your first bundle, split it in half, and pull the tension. So I know this is my longest one. It's always that way for me, and I don't really exactly know why I'm like that, but I want to make sure that I have plenty of room to mess with tension. So I'm gonna pull the apron rod on a little bit so that there's a longer gap. In fact, I'm gonna go even a little further. Um, I just wanna make sure that none of these knots are gonna be so close that they're like touching the apron bar because if that happens, your tension really gets screwy on those bundles and you don't want that. Of course, we don't want screwy tension. Nobody wants that. So for the first one, it's on. And what I do is hold the tension underneath with my other hand while I pass this through and I do not let it go. So I'll grab this, I'm still holding it, see? And put this through the next bundle. I'm making a mess, but it's hard to show people what you do. I'm still holding it. I just had to transfer the tension. And I'm gonna snug it up really good on the second one, okay? And then, see I'm holding it right now, so it never really loosens up. Now I'm gonna hold it here, reach under and grab it, and hold that tension on. I never let it loose. Okay, so I'm at the very end. I'm gonna go around the apron rod like three times to hold that tension while I tie a knot. And then I'm gonna tie a knot to the first, um, I don't know, the first leg of the lashing. Okay, just tie it twice. I'm gonna cut the extra off just so it's not in the way. And depending on how stretchy the yarn is, I notice is, I still have this happen to me sometimes. It is much looser over here than it is down here. But that's fine because all we're gonna do is take some of the slack up and just even it out. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way across just like that. And I can tell it's still looser over on this end. It's not unusual, like none of this is a weird thing. If you ever have this happen and you're like, I just don't understand, it's totally not unusual. So I'm gonna go again and take up some more of this slack. Now. Okay, that is way closer. And what I'm actually gonna do now that the tension is like more even across it is take up some of the slack on the apron bar so I can really tell what my tension is truly like. So, but you just go until you can feel it. So now I can feel on this end, it's actually a little more slack. I'm gonna pull a little bit over. And like, just take your time and get it right. Cause once you got it right, It'll save you a lot of weaving tears. And you can't tell, this is something I should tell you guys, you cannot tell as much if you go like this in the front as you can tell if you go across the back and just don't even like feel it without looking at it because you will feel a tighter spot. Like I've got a tighter spot right here and I can feel it and then it kind of loosens up. So I'm gonna Put a little bit of slack. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna feel again. Oh, I'm getting really close. Still a little bit tight right there, so. Okay, I'm good. Ready to weave. First of all, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see. Oh yeah, you can. I literally used every single little bit I could, so there is hardly any loom waste. It's so pretty. Okay, so I've got this pan of super hot water. This is as hot as it will come out of my tap. And here's the finished material. It turned out so pretty, and I hope you join me next week when I come back and sew with it. Thanks. I love you. Bye.